You're listening to the fastest growing fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Check this out. If you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this podcast and we pick your comment, this is what you can win this time, okay? You can get yourself a free bottle of Neuro Effect from one of our sponsors, Paleo Valley. This is a nootropic-based supplement. I like it quite a bit. It's got lion's mane and cordyceps and reishi and turkey tail. A lot of wonderful things, including Neurofactor. It's a, a product that uh, seems to raise BDNF in the brain. So leave a comment. Be in the first 24 hours. If we pick it, you'll win a bottle of this. Last week's winners. I'm going to give you the names of last week's win winners. We have Danny McLaughlin. We have Caitlin Gomerman. We have Rock Lee 375 Marilyn Espera. We have Doug Campbell, Heather Tharp, and Nathan Sipos. Okay, I want you to email uh, iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com so we can send you your prize. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when we drop these episodes and you can leave a comment and win some free stuff. Also, one more thing before the podcast starts. Check out our Phase 2 bundle. We took MAPS Performance, combined it with MAPS Aesthetic, and give you an incredibly balanced workout that's both athletic-minded and bodybuilder-minded. This bundle is only $79.99. You can go check it out at mapsfebruary.com. Way to go, Heather. What, what's your guys' thoughts on uh, dreams? Like, uh, are dreams, like, do you think that they, they mean something? They have, like, this deeper meaning? Or do you think it's just a bunch of random shit that is, like flown through your brain in the last week. Oh, and yeah. Did you have another dream where you did some weird I stuff? had a really weird dream last night. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Well, it depends on what your dream yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We could play, like, Freud here, and we'll, well see if we can Well, make... you know, Katrina's family, They, I mean, we have, like, a dream book at the house, and, like, she believes, like, all these, these dreams. Really? Yeah, have meaning. What was that. your dream? I don't... Don't hold nothing back. I don't either. buy into that shit, either. I, right. I'm just like, so I I feel like I should set the table for... Justin like, and I will break it down for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. Well, so I had this dream that I was sending, and this, I mean, I think I should tell like what has happened in my life the last three days. Was there gerbils right, involved? That, that, that led to this, right? Because so that really happened. Katrina's yeah. mom's over last night, and Katrina's mom, I think I've shared before, like, they, like they're like they open. Like her and her mom, I walk in the kitchen, they're having a discussion about our sex life, mm. which She's used to be, again. Wow. used to be, uh, no, not at all, not at all. Over <laughs> cornflakes? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> So anyways, we were, we were, we were talking about, that was the conversation last night was like sex stuff and, and flirty and being playful and just how much more of it we have when she's pregnant and like her mom's, we're all, everyone's laughing about it. Right. So that was that. Okay. The day before that I'm packing up stuff in my garage. I come across this old ass photo that I have. I have a picture of me in like this cowboy hat and I'm in a towel <laughs> and like I'm flexing, right. I'm like 20 years old or something. Oh my God, so bro. So listen, can you please, go. Can you please share that? <laughs> so, so I have media. this, absolutely not. No, oh, yeah. not please. Sure. I'll not share that one. So I have this dream that I am, I'm uh, sending these, these pictures to Katrina, right? I send her this like naked cowboy hat mm -hmm. like f photo and Max is at this age right now. So this also happened. Okay. So we were, I was just talking to Katrina's mom when she was over. She was watching Max. And she's like, oh my God, he can like control the iPad already and do stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's so fascinating how smart these kids are already with these these tools that, you know, that we didn't have when we were kids. And so that was also a conversation. So the the dream was that I was sending this back and forth. Max got in my phone and he posted that photo on Instagram. <laughs> and then I, and it was like a new feature on Instagram and I didn't know how to get it off. So I'm like scrambling to try and get it off Instagram and I'm watching the views pile in like crazy and I'm freaking exactly out. Exactly what happened to Paris Hilton. So I wake, I wake up like <laughs> looking for my, it was like one of those dreams that were so vivid and real that like that, that could be a possibility that could have possibly happened to me. That I'm like scrambling for my phone to get to it to make sure I don't have a photo like posted up on Instagram like that. <laughs> that's like so that's like the new like waking up or like dreaming that you're in class and all of a sudden you don't have clothes on and then they ask you a question. You right know, now those are supposed up, to like, oh. those are supposed to mean something. Yeah. Right. So so the theory is with stuff like but that. But now this is social media. Yeah. So the theory is with stuff like that is that you have a feeling right. So whether it be anxiety or mm. fear or insecurity, for yes. example. A common dream that people have is where, falling. where their teeth are falling out. They're yeah. looking in the mirror and their teeth is falling out. Their hair is falling out. Something like that, right? Like it's just, oh my God, what's happening? Mm -hmm. They say that that's connected to feelings of insecurity. So what the, what the theory is, is that the brain 
tries to make sense of the feelings by creating a narrative. Mm. So you feel scared, so you're going to have a dream then then you're, because your brain's trying to create a narrative around that. So that's that. Now, and, that and that's the theory, right? So but I, don't, I don't know if I subscribe to that. My dreams are always like what I just fans. said. There's a, there's a series of things that just happened to me in the last three days, all of which got all put into like one dream. Mm. Max's ability, and because they're instantly after the dream, after I've realized it's a dream and I get over and I'm mm -hmm. not sweating anymore, I go, oh, okay. Well, you I, actually were sweating over that, <laughs> <Yeah>. bro? <laughs> Which is unlike you. That's no. actually unlike you. Yeah. Because yeah. if I know you as yeah. well as I do, if you accidentally did that yeah. within 10, you'd five minutes. you have to own it. Yeah, five minutes, you'd be like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd probably All just right. roll with it. Everybody yeah. saw a picture of me and my you know, towel hey. around my stuff. I mean, it was a very graphic. It wasn't like a... Like a were you, hold on, were you holding I was like naked. Hold on, were you holding, no, the, I was naked. Were you holding the towel no hands? Yeah, no, there's no <laughs> towel. There's no towel. There's a cowboy hat. Oh, you're naked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a picture I was sending. So in the dream... It was me. So the the thing in I my you were holding a towel. No, no. So the conversation <laughs> I was having with her mom. With no is hands. That hey, check it out. If yeah. you listen to Mind Pump long enough, you've heard us talk about. I've shared uh, stories about Katrina and I and our sex life, and that she's the one who's always coming after me. Well, when she's pregnant, for some reason, I just uh, my sex drive goes through the roof, and so it's me always trying to get at her. So I'm sending her stuff to uh, try and get her all wound up. You're one of those guys, right? So that was the that was the conversation I had with her mom. So it was me sending like nudes to Katrina. To get her all hot and bothered, and then it go up. I went up on Instagram. Yeah, it goes up on Instagram because my son gets a hold of my phone and then is able to do That's that. That's interesting. Mm. So your son being involved makes me think that the embarrassment factor would be even higher for you, right? Like, oh, my son saw this, so yeah. now he's or 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 is that not even something you think? No, of? I think in the dream I was just I was more frantic that at the okay, and again like the the algorithm. You know how I mean a uh, new feature on Instagram was like a new thing. You know when Reels came out, <laughs> so, so it was a feature, a function that I couldn't, oh. I didn't know how to work on Instagram. Instagram, which that's very real I for just all put of it us. together. Okay, let's I hear it. I just put it together. Mm. Your fear of technology <laughs> yeah. advancing faster than you because you're old. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to operate this, you know, VCR what? or whatever. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I don't all, know how to use- All of a sudden, now you're just exposed. Yeah. I'm a media guy. I don't know how to use social media. Ah. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that does. That makes sense. Really? Yeah. So, yeah no, That's hilarious. Sense. Yeah. It was less about my son yeah. uh, in there. It was obviously, uh, it was, that was the way it got up on the social media. It was more about- I couldn't get it off. I didn't know how yeah. to delete it fast enough. Like it happened. He was playing with the my world's phone. advancing too fast. Yeah, yeah. too fast for me. I don't know. How to I do can this. only imagine a lot of these influencers like having dreams like that. That just like did their only fans and then and then figured out that like oh my god, my kids are gonna see this one day. Yes. You know? yeah. Have you guys thought of that, by I've, the way? I've, speaking of only fans, hate to interrupt you, but I just saw that someone posted. I thought it was so funny that you know everybody thought they were going to. Oh, be, the meme! That was a meme I posted. Yeah, to get rich over the only fans and then realize you know, what it's like being a local rapper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I read about that. I actually read an article yeah. that there were girls when the when the lockdown happened. Mm. They were like, "Okay, I'm going to make some money posting nudes, and people are going to pay for to see me naked." Yeah. and I have five thousand followers, so. If 500 of them sign up for, I'm going to make all this money. And so all these girls did this. Yeah, no, it's just the three creepy guys that have been creepy, yeah. that have been yeah. fucking they, stalking yeah. you since And they made like, you know, 200 bucks. And <laughs> yeah. now their naked pictures are out. Oh. You could have cut out the middleman and just, you know, like ask for money through your DMs. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah so that just, point, just Venmo me? Yeah, yeah just, just Venmo, Venmo me. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, dreams are very, I hate it when you have a dream and then you wake up. You ever have it like a, like a bad dream and you wake up and it takes you like 15 seconds to, Figure out that it was a dream. Did it ever happen to you? Yeah, well, that was just last night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was, is that what you woke it, up and you so were like, yeah, no, I went looking for my, like right away, I, I woke up and my initial reaction was searching for my phone on my dresser to grab it and double check. Uh, are you it. taking anything different or anything? Because that, that's happened to me sometimes when I have a different like supplement or something I'm like messing around with. I get really deep sleep and it's like a vivid dream. So this happens to me when I, so I, I smoke most nights before I go to bed. And so I normally don't dream, but every once, like last night I didn't smoke. So I didn't smoke oh, last night. Dream. And then then I dream, oh, and I dream yeah, these yeah. very vivid dreams. And I think because I don't do it very often, they're like even more vivid. Mm -hmm. Have you got? Have you ever had um, a lucid dream? What do you mean? Okay, so lucid dreaming is Where when you can control it. You know your dream. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. And then you can control. No, it. I learned that. I think I learned how to do that when I was when I, when you were a kid and you used to get nightmares as a Same kid. Same here. This is what happened to me. Yeah. At, finally, and I don't remember if like a parent or somebody told me like, "Son, you know you can control that or make sure it doesn't mm -hmm. happen." And then I just remember the next time I was in a scary situation, I was like, "Oh, I have a gun now," you know, mm -hmm. or "Oh, I'm fine. Someone's here," or the lights go on, or like whatever, like. You know, I figured out how to control those. So I've, yeah, no, definitely. I, I figured out as a kid how to wake myself up. 
So I'd be in a scary dream, and then I wake myself up out of the dream. Yeah. Until this day, I could still do that as long as I know I'm dreaming. If I don't know I'm dreaming, then the, I mean I'm I am totally at the mercy. Yeah, of the I had dream. a funny one, which was like is super ridiculous because uh, like I've been like startled sometimes. My little wiener dog like will bark it just it, like so like loud. I know it's just like Burp! and like I, like like startle me. You know, like he's he's louder even than my Weimaraner. And uh, so I had this dream where I was like petting him and everything, and then he looks up at me and he's like. Rawr, I turned into this like demon dog. And, and, like I literally like jumped like in my bed out of sleep and I woke up and I was like, "This is so stupid, dude." dude. I'm like scared of my yeah, wiener. Yeah, uh, just so, hey, somebody needs to please who's a listener right now needs to take that thirty second my clip little right wiener. there. <laughs> he says, "Little wiener stroking himself," and then he says, "What did you just say in that last yeah, bit?" I mean, loud. Just so yeah, much yeah bro, you could just it's, cut that up right there. <laughs> yes, please. please. Yeah, J uh, Jessica's had dreams where I was like flirting with a girl or whatever, and she'll realize it's a dream. But she's still mad at me. Like the fe <laughs> the feelings are still there. I could tell. I'm like, you're still mad at me because of that dream, aren't you? That's not, yeah, right. That didn't really oh, happen. Yeah, you get that sometimes. Like you were messing yeah. around on me. Well, okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a a statement that I'm gonna stand behind. Okay. Hmm. Hip thrusts are stupid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, bottom line. Wow. This is not this the is bold. Not the exercise itself. I think they're valuable. Okay. But I think it's really stupid when people post their hip thrust PRs. Yeah. And here's why. I literally Does never that happen. Who do you guys follow? Oh, dude, people do it all the time. Oh dude. my god! I, 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 and it, it reminds me of a leg press. I think it's because you can add a lot of weight to it. It looks impressive, so yeah. you want to show everybody how much you can hip thrust. Yeah. I never, I never hip thrust. And I was, yeah. today I was doing five plates on it. Like whatever. If I wanted to, I could have gone probably higher. It's it's one of those exercises. I don't understand why people brag about it. You uh -huh. know, they want to post their lift. Uh, if it's not well, a squat, deadlift, or bench, or overhead press, I don't know if it's really that impressive. Yeah, it'd be great if, like, because you used to see that with leg press a lot, and then yes. guys would, like, just, like, sit on top of it, yes. and then they'd be like, yeah. That's it'd be hilarious if they did that on your lap yeah. while you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I can hit, yeah. Hey, Adam, bunch Justin, of come on dudes. over. Like, yo, look at how little strong I am. Yeah. 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 Justin, you sit on my hips. Adam, you sit on Justin's hips, yeah. and I'll do six reps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real fast. Strength. <laughs> yeah. How will we know when you're done? You'll know. Yeah. You'll know. I was yeah. listening to actually, so, uh, Brett Contreras just had a, a somebody interviewed him, and he, he was talking about he did an experiment where he, no squatting, no deadlifting. And all he did was uh, hip thrust and like other auxiliary work and was able to uh, grow his glutes and actually even increase his strength in his, in his squat. Okay, it. now, yeah. All Which is interesting. All joking very, aside, very interesting. the carryover, just I'll speak to deadlift, right? The carryover of squats and hip thrust to deadlifts is dramatic. That's true. My deadlift will go up if my squat or my hip thrust goes up. That's not true with other exercises necessarily. So there is a huge uh, carryover. I haven't yet seen if the hip thrust uh, influences my squat. I'm assuming it does, but to deadlift for sure. If I add just a little bit to my squat, and, my, and it, you know, like I said, I just started messing around with hip thrust. I can feel it in my deadlift. I, in fact, yesterday I pulled a weight I hadn't pulled in a long time. It felt very easy, and it's because. I feel like it's because of the squat and the hip thrust. Well, mechanically, mm -hmm. the hip thrust and the deadlift are actually more similar than you would think. Yes, I mean it's very what you're what you're loading and then the the power of driving the hips forward. Mm. That's one of the biggest or the easiest like critiques that I can help somebody when I watch someone deadlift is they're lifting the weight up versus thrusting the hips forward and oh, using it like a lever. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. how yeah. often do you see that? When you teach a deadlift at the beginning, it's natural to think you're picking the bar right, up. Right, 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 right. And so you kind of like squat the bar Rather up and down. push your feet through the yeah, floor. Yeah, exactly, and versus floor. getting yourself with all that tension and then thrusting the hips forward. Yes. You'll get so much more weight up, which that's you're directly training that when you're in the hip mm -hmm. thrust. I mean, that's yeah. what you're, you're working on. Yeah, I can't wait till – and I know we got that platform coming, and I don't know when it's going to get here, but I can't wait till we get it. This one, you can put bands on the sides. Yeah, and then do bat band deadlifts, banded deadlifts, where you have a heavy weight and you oh, add a band. That's my favorite. Oh, it's it, chains are great too, but chains just feel uh, rougher <laughs> on the body. Yeah. Bands, I feel like I could do them all the well, time. Well, chains suck for deadlifting because when you come down with the plates, you hit the chains. I did that yesterday. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. annoying. That yeah, annoying. that's why I never do that. I, I, I've done it a handful of times. And no, it's, I think it's because the chains are too heavy for you. Yeah. Oh, is that yeah, what is it? Just, <laughs> just a little too much. I use yes. big chains. That's why. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, use little dog leash chains. <laughs> <laughs> I, use, I use a necklace. Like three yeah, you just come in with them on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing today? Yeah, but I, oh, I mean, yeah. Okay. Dude, anyway. I'll tell you guys something, though. Like, uh, there's an hour of my life I'll never get back. Uh, I try to do a little bit of research because, you know, like, 
Adam's really good about finding trends and things people are watching and doing and all, you know, all this nonsense. And so I'm like, all right, dude, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do the work for us here. Right. So I watched that, like, uh, what is it called? Not free Britney, but it's, it's called something like that. Uh, but is it the documentary on Britney Spears? Yes. On That's Hulu? the one Adam loved. I it was, watched it. It was terrible, dude. Oh, it was not terrible. Adam Come was on. He was raving about that. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, seriously, like, what value did you get from that? And did they you even feel her. sorry for her? Didn't you hear what happened? Didn't you hear what happened in the news? Yeah. Well, they freed her from. Okay. So, woohoo. It worked. Wait, okay. wait, hold on a second. Can you guys tell me the backstory? So, freed her from what? Was she in jail? What no, no, it? no. Her dad has it. What's it called, Doug? What's it called when your parents have control of all your finances? And they normally do it for somebody who's got like. Conservative. Yeah, conservative. Something like that. Yeah. They, okay. So, her dad has all control of her stuff. Oh. Right. And has had that forever. And the, the idea, you're supposed to do that when someone isn't like. When, when they're not 18. Or, no. When either, they're not mentally fit. Either, to, yeah. When they're not mentally fit to make their own make financial their decisions. decisions or they're under 18 years old. Yeah. She, obviously, she's neither in, not in either one of those situations, but still, he's been able to... I don't keep, know. The mentally fit part's a little questionable, though. <sighs> well, come on. How much do you really follow Britney and you know that? The girl's been producing music and stuff like that. Yeah, without, at this point. I mean, I think she had a my mental, point is, though, mental breakdown. It, the, because of the documentary, it went so viral that she got enough support and they... they so just, did this this happen after? Because I don't I don't remember that part in the uh, no, documentary. Yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. It, yeah. The documentary happened. This just oh, happened. that was the cause this of the this just happened like a week ago. Okay. Uh, so that's interesting. The documentary itself was not interesting. Oh, yeah. And it was an okay documentary. It wasn't yeah, like... Yeah, it was It <laughs> yeah. was just like whatever. Like, you're going through like... And I get it because, you know, Princess Diana, all that stuff, like where you're getting followed by paparazzi. Like, yeah. cra- like she was just getting bombarded like constantly with that. And it's like, of course, that's going to make anybody, you know, a little bit mental. Oh, my God. That would suck. Well, no, as a kid too. So I was a, I was a big fan of her as a kid, right? And the reason why I like the documentary is because a lot of people don't... Don't don't realize how much she got trashed, dude. Like they just, oh, they yeah. that poor girl, dude. When she got and that's a, oh poor Britney, she's rich. And all, like, dude, not worth no, it. They, she was a goody goody little girl, virgin girl coming off Disney, gets all this fame, yeah. and everybody just wanted to rip her. Yeah, they were all shitting on her. Oh yeah, yeah. It, was, it was unnecessary. That would never, you would never see that today. Today, yeah. I mean, the social justice police would just just tear up anybody that treated her the way they did. Yeah. But it made headlines, and so and they. Her popularity was so big that what's the um, what's the famous magazine that uh, Inquirer and also yeah. oh, National Inquirer. Oh man, yeah. they were just making money. They made more money off of Britney Spears in that like. That's 10- what it was. There was a massive uh, industry there where they're like, oh my god, like we could sell just by following around and pestering her and mm. destroying her name. Did yeah. you have so, you guys heard uh, that there's a strategy that people are doing now when they're getting followed by paparazzi to prevent videos from getting posted where they're getting videotaped. They'll play a popular song real loud, loud enough for the cameras to pick it up. They can't post it now on YouTube or whatever because of copyright. <laughs> That's infringement. smart. Have you guys what? heard of this? No, uh, I have not. Smart yeah, so like you're getting filmed right now, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want. So you just play real loud a very popular song, and they can't post it now because the song is on in yeah. the background. Brilliant. Oh, that brilliant. Is- is that true? Yeah, That's- or they'll oh, that will it, definitely or they'll have hold, to post it yeah. on mute because they can't post the sound because of that. Isn't yeah, that great? I guess that's the only thing though. Like, if you're getting filmed from a distance from like paparazzi, is it really what you're saying that they're really capturing and putting on there? Or is it more like what you're doing that they're getting? Normally, those things like so they don't really destroy. Like they take they take a photo. They don't even need video. They take a photo of you and then they draw their own conclusion well, yeah. and what they is write. Is that even still an industry? Is my question. Bro, it is oh, really yeah. because are like, you like me? who are they following around now that has any relevance? You know, because that used to be a big thing was like following the A list stars and like getting them when they're fat. Well, and you know what though? You might have a point there, Justin, because now a lot of the celebrities are posting they're insignificant. Them, they're, not just that. They're posting I'm talking about like celebrities today, right? You they're all they're all new media. Yeah. YouTube, Instagram, whatever. They're posting stuff so often that yeah, on how, their own. Yeah, how valuable is a paparazzi going to be filming you doing something that you just posted on Instagram yeah. yourself? Well, no, they catch the stuff that you don't post. That's what makes it go viral. Yeah. Is that they catch you like that vegan, that one vegan influencer? Yes, who got caught eating. they catch they catch somebody <laughs> who posts these pretty pictures of themselves all the time. Yeah. They catch them coming out of you know like some appo- mm-hmm. doctor appointment and their bellies hanging over there. I mean, that's uh, so the, gross. That's dude. what that's they're famous industry. for. Is they, yeah. and they and they and that documentary highlights. Uh, and I, I don't know anybody personally. I don't know anybody who they did that to worse than Britney Spears. Yeah. Michael they, Jackson. It's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson got a lot of Michael, up there. Oh, he got. But, I mean, since he was a kid, yeah, right, he got destroyed. It's a. It's. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. It, these these paparazzi have these crazy cameras. 
they you know these celebrities who go on vacation mm -hmm. and they'll they'll be across the you know miles away look at the size of that camera miles away Whoa. zooming in on you in your in your, in your private balcony or whatever and they're taking uh, pictures oh look at the, the name of the title of the article is the golden years of paparazzi have mostly gone see i agree with that because People post themselves so much yeah. that there's not so much value, right? In mm -hmm. like there was before. See, I don't agree with that. I think that there's still there's still a huge market to take somebody like Kim Kardashian who posts all these perfect photos of herself is to catch her when mm -hmm. she's not, and then to post it on Inquire. coming out of the plastic surgery. Yes, the, yes, or like, that right, or or like busting her out saying like, oh, she's not exercising; she's just getting lipo every other week. You know what, is, like, what does that say, Doug? Or, or can you can you give us a synopsis of why it thinks uh, it's over? I can't. I haven't read the article. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, what, I mean, what but you... it seems like what you said. Uh, you know, it's becoming more difficult to get these shots when everybody else is posting them by themselves. Yeah. See, that's what I would figure. Look at this at the at the at the gold rush peak. An exclusive picture would typically fetch five to fifteen thousand dollars. I bet you it's in the hundreds now. I bet you make nothing compared to what you used to make before. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I and plus, like you said, the the celebrities that are different now, you know what I'm saying? Like, less people care about Britney Spears, some pop star right now, and they care yeah. more about some famous YouTube person. Yeah, well, then the YouTube ones, what they do is they stage all these, like, you know, crazy events and things just to get views, you know? And it's like, do you it, did you really catch them, or did they stage the whole thing just to get, you know, clicks? Yeah. I, would, I would guess, too, part of that is just, I mean, these guys, the paparazzi, they have not evolved their business i think there'd still be big business and people going and exposing all these instagram people that have millions of followers and they put a facade on of looking and doing a certain thing and doing that just like the yeah example. that'd be interesting yeah I, it's Honestly, just yeah. the business is different now now it's that now it's not about tom cruise you know out on the beach with some other girl besides his wife and shit like that that doesn't that's not as popular anymore mm -hmm. but find somebody who is a fitness celebrity who's got you know four million followers smoking cigarettes or smoking something. cigarettes or catching them at burger king or something like that i yeah. guarantee that would get attention yeah. so. I, again i remember yeah. that vegan there was that vegan influencer yeah. who got caught eating meat and it just it, it blew up right and, right sure, so. so the business still destroyed. exists i think it's just evolved yeah. and changed it's different yeah hey i read something yesterday it blew my mind something that i believed to be true since i was a kid that apparently they've tested and is false. So I'm going to ask you guys. A, I'm going to ask you guys a question. I know what you're going to say. Back in the day when the Nintendo first came out, the NES, right? Yeah. The original Nintendo. You put in the game cartridge. Cartridge. You hit power. It's not working properly. What did you do? You take you it out. It. You blow on it. You take an eraser. You, you know. You clean yeah. it. And then, and then you, you wedge it, it again. Yes. Yeah. You wedge it a bunch of times. None of that works. So, so they did a study. <laughs> no, that's Stop bullshit. It. Hell yes, it works. No, no, they did a study, and they it's said for me. they said just pulling it out and putting it in without blowing on it gives you uh, the same or better odds of it working than blowing in it. So they said blowing in it was just that's what we no thought. What way. about the dust? No way. That's what they said. In no, the, the I call bullshit. No, that's what they said, dude. No way. Yes, because if you pull it out and put it in. They're saying they did the studies on these games, and they said pulling it out, putting it back in, gives you the same or better odds than blowing it. Why blowing did they in do the study? Huh? Why? Why would they do this? Yeah. <laughs> why, why ruin my childhood? <laughs> the hell's wrong with these? Yeah, people? like why? My my theory is because I I don't remember how you guys did, but we had tons of like little Nintendo games, and they would be laying out on the carpet mm -hmm. and sitting there. So I would think that it's because it collects all this dust on the on the little. That's chip. what we all thought. Yeah, it was logical. And then you blew on you it. You know what's funny it, too? Justin said the eraser. I remember when everybody thought that to do. Didn't that you too. do that? I why never you? I never did the eraser. Why? Oh, because well well I, I felt like there was part of it like turned color a little bit, and like the eraser kind of brought it back to. Like a shiny form, <laughs> which was totally just uh, who knows, like some Dude, bro. What really worked thing. for us was that we you blow in it and then you actually don't put it all the way in. You you smash and wedge it in. Oh right? yeah, so that would always get it to work. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. just kind of push it and you send it. So you know what's funny about this? This is before the internet. How the hell did that spread worldwide? That's, everybody knows that. Every kid, but nobody mouth, nobody read that anywhere. I didn't every read kid it anywhere. Yeah, every kid in school. Isn't that uh, strange? Yeah, yeah it's I great. didn't read any of that stuff. But that's, that's what all every, we talked about. Yeah, and we talk about all like the little secret things you'd find or like how to warp to different levels like you didn't even know like you had to talk and figure that out you did yeah. you absolutely had to yeah, that's, anyway that's funny so uh, uh res any responses on our new sponsor element because i'm getting tons and tons of dms on that stuff and i have some yeah. personal experience yeah it's interesting too because i i posted and I, I i put like some of the uh, chocolate salt in with coffee and like, I'm like oh wow this is a thing this is amazing and like i look and they, they have like examples of 
a ton of people doing this. This really is like it turned into a thing. Wow. Oh, it's bomb. Yeah. yeah. I saw now I'm on like I've, I've done it for at least over a week yeah, now. Yeah, so how, are you noticing a difference in your pumps I do. performance? I you know what you know what I actually notice? I notice my energy. Yep. I notice energy yep, going yep. into the workout. Yep. I it, it gives me a similar feeling similar as in like the energy towards a workout as like a pre-workout without that caffeinated like you know you know uh, jittery. jittery yeah well, the- i mean rob wolf explained it well in our podcast is if you don't eat first of all if you exercise your sodium requirements are much higher than someone else's mm-hmm. and then if you don't eat a lot of heavily processed foods you you need to probably add sodium to your diet i used to, i used to do this with uh my endurance clients when i would have endurance clients who would do lots of running and cycling i used to have them add uh, uh himalayan salt to their water mm-hmm. and they would notice improvements in performance um so it makes perfect sense of course i told i was the first one to use it and i noticed uh i had a better pump when i worked out and then jessica remember remember we did on a podcast and he said that for breastfeeding. Women will make more milk. They could drink tons of water and sometimes still not produce more milk because they don't have the right balance of electrolytes and it's mm. usually sodium that they need, right? So I've been giving it to Jessica and she's been drinking it daily. Definitely increased her milk right. production. And she's uh, has a tendency to go get lightheaded a little bit, like have low blood pressure. So if she's like down on the floor and she stands up real quick, sometimes she'll get a little dizzy. Mm. And it's not an emergency, like, you know, bad thing, but it's definitely something that she feels. Since she's been drinking uh, Element, that. no, wow. not, not nearly as much wow. as before. And it was getting bad because of the breastfeeding. I feel like it, What's, again, what I find fascinating about that is that hmm. they reached out quite some time ago yep. and we were all like, nah. I was like, electro, yeah, I, nah. I don't really know yeah, how to pitch this. Nah, yeah. All of us were totally not about it yeah. at all. No, I, I, it was sitting in here for weeks, maybe a month or longer. Oh, it was longer than that. And I remember time, I was going to work out and I said, eh, it's, you know, this is, uh, what was it? It was like, uh, you know, pink lemonade flavor or something like that. I'll just add it to my water while I work out. And I had a great workout. And I was like, this is interesting. And then I looked a little deeper. I'm like, oh, this has got a thousand milligrams of sodium. I don't know any electrolyte supplement that has a thousand milligrams of sodium in it. It's usually, it's off. Um, and it worked. And then, you know, talking to Rob Wolf makes perfect sense. Yeah. So. I mean, after that interview you did with Rob Wolf, that sold me on at least trying it. And then I did, you know, and I, of the first couple, I didn't want to speak about it until I've done it for a while. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's been pretty consistent. I notice. Yeah, I, it's I my feel pre workout. And so now, what's your thoughts? Does that mean for someone like me? Is that because I'm I'm potentially under consuming that much? Yep. Because you know what? <clears throat> what I I I thought about too is like back when I was uh you know before I was competing and just trying to get big right as a young as a young twenty five year old kid. I mean, I was eating a lot of fast food in my in my diet, so I was probably so getting, your sodium was fine. So I was probably getting a lot more sodium back then than what I do now. I eat way cleaner today than when I did back then. Now I salt and season all my foods, but that is I, what I know is that's nothing in comparison to one fast food meal. One fast food meal is equivalent to like five like you know, whole foods that have been salted like Correct. crazy. Correct. So and back then when I was in my twenties, I was eating fast food every day. Yeah. Every day I was eating out somewhere fast. And and the less your carbs are, the more sodium you probably need. Uh, in fact, the keto That's the other thing. Flu I'm, much, low, I'm the, much lower on carbs, Yeah, too. like, oh, I feel crappy because I'm on keto and you have low carb. Yeah. A lot of times, like, bump your sodium and then see how you feel. So it's one of those things. Here's the other thing, too. Because of the way it's made, it has a nice mouthfeel. I don't know if you guys noticed. You know when you drink Gatorade and it's got that, like, soft mouthfeel? Mm-hmm. Uh, element does that. Have you guys noticed that when you yeah. drink it, it gives you that kind of soft mouth. It's a nice. It's a. It's a. He, they knocked it out of the park. And again, this was this was not a product that I thought we would work with. No, no, we were. I think we were. I think we were against it at first. I was not a fan at all. But yeah. now I'm sold. No, they they totally killed it. Hey, one more thing I wanted to bring up um, that I think is an interesting thing to to talk to the audience about in terms of fitness is you know uh, oftentimes when we think about programming our workouts, we don't think about the common muscles that tend to work together or the common pairs that work together and maybe switch that up a little bit. So I'll give you an example, right? When you work out your chest, you more often than not also tend to activate your triceps, mm-hmm. right? It's involved in all the pressing movements for your chest and in shoulders. So that's the, those are the pairs that you tend to work out quite a bit when you do chest. Uh, when you do a fly, now you're doing bicep paired with chest. Mm. And so it's an interesting thing to think about. Can I pair different muscle groups together to hit this target area? And is that going to affect my body differently? And I believe that that's true. 
And then if we go to back, yeah. back is usually with pullovers biceps. Pullovers with triceps. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A dumbbell pullover is tricep and back, which most back exercises are bicep, bicep. Yeah. and back. So just something else to think about when you're putting your workout I together. I always think about this. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> and I don't know when I started to like... I don't know, put a lot of energy around changing my exercises up based off of this, but that's a lot of times what will dictate what chest exercise I decide to do. Mm. So for example, if I did arms the day before, two days before, whatever, and my biceps are totally sore, that might not be a day that I do fly stuff. Oh, I see. So I might not do it because they're already fatigued from that, and I might do more pressing things that incorporate more tricep work. And the same thing goes for on back day. If back day I've got my biceps are really sore, but my triceps are not, then I, that's my, where I might include pullovers in there. Mm. So I always try and pay attention to when all my like secondary muscles are sore from training maybe a workout before, two workouts before, and then altering what what exercises I choose to do in the workout that would incorporate the opposing one. Yeah, mm -hmm. speaking of pullovers, I think that's still one of the most underrated exercises. I really do. It's such a valuable exercise oh, yeah. that a lot of people simply don't do, and there's not too many movements that move in that that particular plane it's a of motion. Very unique combo. Very, unique, and it's great for shoulder mobility. It's yeah. a bodybuilding movement that's phenomenal for shoulder uh, for shoulder mobility and a great lat developer, especially if you get good at it and you get strong at it. Um, and if you mess around with like a barbell version, you're going to develop your lats uh, in it, as an isolation movement, almost like a compound movement. I found pullovers are more like a compound movement in, in, in terms of development than they are like a, an isolation movement. It was a movement. staple movement for me with clients, all clients, no matter what your goal is, yeah. just because of the, the benefits for shoulder mobility. Mm -hmm. Because that one of the first things you see that mm -hmm. goes with age is the client's ability to lift their arms all the way above their head. So by doing an exercise like that that promotes that beyond that mm -hmm. and keeping them doing that as they age, I think is such a it should be a staple exercise in in most people's routines. Mm -hmm. Given you have the ability to do that, right? I mean, obviously if I'm dealing with someone who has a, an injury in their shoulder and they can't do the movement, then we want to work towards mm -hmm. it. But if you're he if you have healthy enough shoulders to do a pullover, I think it's an exercise that you should always remain in your routine. Totally. Have you guys heard of this drug? Have you guys gotten any DMs about this weight loss drug study that came out that showed like the most effective weight loss drug ever? Is tested? that um? Hmm. You, what's that guy that you've gone back and forth with a couple times on Instagram? Uh, blonde doctor, doctor hmm. starts with an N. You know who he is. He you jabbed him like years ago, two or three years ago. He's a good guy, right? Like we hmm. have, I have nothing bad to say about him. Most his content, I think we agree with and like what he puts out there. He's got mutual friends with Lane and, and buddies of ours. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Dr. Nadal. Nadal uh, something Nadal, like that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, nice guy. Good guy. Yeah. He just promoted it. He's promoting some fat loss supplement right now. Is uh, it it's his? Not, this is not a supplement. This is a drug. It is, it's So it's not something that you could buy over the counter. Oh, but it okay. is fascinating. So What are the mechanisms? What well, does it do? The, so the drug is called uh, semaglutide. Uh, S-E-M-A-G-L-U-T-I-D-E. And when, when they did this study, they found that people who used this drug, who they gave this drug to, 35% of them who took the drug lost more than one-fifth of their total body weight. Now, everybody else who took it maybe didn't lose that much, but also lost weight. What's, it was, so, say the name again. Uh, sem semaglutide. This semaglutide. is it. He, wrote he, a whole, he, did a whole, he did a whole post on it. Okay, but it's yeah. not a supplement. You can't. No, no, it's a drug. You're yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah. Right when I looked at it, it said it's a drug. Yeah. So he did. He just posts about it. So the way it works is it uh, it, it changes people's behaviors, makes them not eat nearly as much. Hmm. So it's very, very interesting so substance. More like an appetite suppressant? Or? Somewhat. Uh, somewhat. And I know that it mimics, I can't remember what hormone or how it works. It hijacks, this is, what, this is according to Science Daily, it hijacks the body's own appetite regulating system in the brain leading to reduced hunger and caloric intake or calorie intake. So for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, and I don't know what the potential side effects are, or what can mm. happen to somebody, but this would be a very effective drug because you just don't have to do anything. You give it to someone and then they eat less as a mm. result of it. And people are apparently losing yeah, just weight. internally, like their the, their they just don't mindset want towards it is different. Yep. My concern with that would be it, what mm. happens afterwards. I'm sure you go right back. You go right back. Right. I mean, yeah. so you you use this drug to get you to not be hungry all the time, and then you go you get off because you get your goal. Mm. Yeah. Then what happens? And does this affect your hormones? Yeah. Well, okay. So it mim it's a it's a, the compound is structurally similar and mimics the human. Gluc glucagon-like peptide 1, so GLP-1 hormone, which is released into the blood mm. from the gut after meals, right? So it basically could be tricking the body 
or the brain into thinking you just ate. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So your appetite now is uh, reduced. So you're satisfied more. Very interesting, right? Now, now of course, okay, you might eat less, but does that mean you're going to still make better choices? Are you still choosing the right macros? Well, and then still- and then the thing that we always mm. talk about. You just had we had a conversation with somebody who lost what a fifty or hundred pounds on our our live Q and A the other day. And, you know, are you dealing with the root cause Right, mm-hmm. that got you there? Mm-hmm. Right. I That's mean, a very good point because I've worked with gastric bypass uh, people. And when you get gastric bypass surgery, you know, they, they, they yeah, essentially- Yeah, you can't eat a bunch there You either. can't. They make your stomach the size of a thumb, right? Yeah. So you're, you, you're forced It's physically really hard to and yeah, if, cram it in there. And if you look at the studies on people with uh, gastric bypass, the drug abuse rate, the, you know, all, the abuse rate of other substances goes through the roof. Why? Because their favorite drug of choice has been taken from it's no them. longer available, right? So, like, if you take an alcoholic and you just snapped your fingers and now alcohol didn't exist in the world, or anymore. no, or better yet, made alcohol toxic to him and he hates it and it's poison. So, doesn't it? He, they would they would likely many of them would find something else mm-hmm. to self medicate with. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. So that's a very good point. So, like, oh, I lost weight, but now I you know smoke cigarettes or right. I gamble. What or, were the behaviors? What that look like going into it? Right. Yeah. Or I'm still depressed or whatever. Yeah. So very very interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean that's the problem I have with all these these all these things that are coming out is that and and here's where I I, I understand. Right, and I've had these clients. Like, if it's life or death, I got somebody who's three hundred and something, pushing four hundred pounds. Doctors like you got less than five years to live if you don't get a hundred to two hundred pounds of this off of you. Doing interventions like that to save that person's life, I hundred percent agree with it. Yeah, because that's more important. Like at this moment, this is extreme. Let's we got to do this. Yeah, we got to take drastic measures. At that yeah, point. yeah, and then, honestly, at at this point, we don't have time to do the therapy, years of therapy right. that it's probably going to take to get to the root cause of what got you here. But let's save your life right now, and then, then let's go talk about how we can do that. So I understand it for those cases, but that that's a small, much smaller percentage than the majority of people that will reach out and try and use a drug mm-hmm. like this, in my I, opinion. I had mm-hmm. a client once, this was so frustrating, heartbreaking as a trainer, because it's just, you know, you can only help someone uh, who wants to help themselves. No matter how good you are, what your information is, how good your intentions are, how passionate you are. If the person doesn't want to help themselves, there's not a damn thing you could do. And I remember I had a client once who hired me because the doctor said they had to lose 60 pounds in order to qualify for gastric bypass surgery. So I thought, well, I'm going to get this person to lose 60 pounds and I'm going to show them that they could do this on their own and we're going to work on all these behaviors and they're never, and then they're, they're going to decide not to get, that was my goal. They're going to decide they don't need the gastric bypass because we're going to do it the right way. Not what happened. They lost the weight with me. They they did bad stuff with the diet that I couldn't control. Got the gastric bypass, and then the next thing I heard years later is they gained a lot of the weight back because mm-hmm. they actually were able to stretch out the small little stomach that the doctor had created. Well, I've told you guys stories of people that yeah. would try and hire me to add weight so they could qualify. That but one's even crazier. That would that blew my they, mind. They weren't heavy enough. Yes, because we were right across the street from uh, the Kaiser San Teresa over and there. And they do have a gastric pot program. Yeah, yeah, they do. They have like one of the bigger ones in the state mm-hmm. uh, right there. So I'd get a lot of them that would come through. Mm-hmm. And then I'd get the, I'd get somebody who's like at you know 200 pounds, you know, and they're like, oh, I need to be at least 250 in order to qualify for that. And then the, can you help me gain mm-hmm. weight? To qualify for the gas, I would also worry too with with a drug like this of yeah the abuse of it, like somebody that's like not really that uh, obese or you know, and there's just like finding a way to get access to this drug and just keep you know like reiterating uh, you know a problem that they have and like take it to a degree that's like you you know what I I wonder if it's I wonder if it's already like circulating models bodybuilding exactly bodybuilding I wonder if it's already circulating the body they're always the first to experiment with crazy new cutting edge drugs absolutely I bet you if you searched on some of the forums that it might be a tool that they're using for cutting right yeah, now. Yeah, my oh, what's what's part of your 12 week prep? Well, I take uh, this steroid, I take this growth hormone, I take some of this insulin and then I take this drug that makes me not eat. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Wow. I, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Interesting. Anyway. Okay, so we talked about Element. You guys tried that. I, I got another supplement I want you guys to try from one of our other partners. Hmm. So I'm going to start giving it to you guys before your workouts. It's Paleo Valley's uh, Neuro Effect. Hmm. So I'm going to give you guys that cuz you guys typically do caffeine before your workout, right? Yeah. Right. So coffee or pre-workout or whatever. Yeah. Take this in conjunction with it. I've been experimenting in one of their newer products, one of the products we haven't talked too much about. I've been experimenting with it and I've been taking it along with caffeine before my workout and I can definitely tell the times I take it versus the times What is that in I don't. it that you like? So I'm going to read 
I'll read some of the ingredients just for the for the audience uh, so they can kind of so lion's mane is in there, cordyceps is in there. Oh, okay. This is stuff you've talked about before. Yes, though. reishi, there's oh. turkey tail, so there's shiitake. So when I take this, uh, and then there's neurofactor in there, which is uh, this this whole fruit extract from uh, coffee that's got this something in there that raises what's called BDNF in the brain, brain derived mm-hmm. neuro- neurotropic factor. It's like this, it's like miracle grow for the brain, is how they've what they've called it. So I'll take four of these capsules with my caffeine pre-workout, and I've been alternating workouts with it and without it just to see if I notice a difference. What I notice is a smoother, more consistent kind of stimulant effect, and I don't get the crash afterwards. It reminds me of when I added theanine to caffeine for the first time. Mm-hmm. So you've been talking about these mushrooms for a long time, yes. and you've used them, and the, I was just the one who didn't like the powdery taste yeah, stuff. So yeah. the fact that they have this in pill form- This is capsule I form. I can get down with that. Yeah, so you take four of these, take it in the morning before you work out. Or, or half hour, hour or so you say? Same time you take your caffeine. Okay. Or uh, if you guys don't like the crash of caffeine, wait till you start to come down, then take this and then see if you notice uh, anything. Oh, interesting. But, I, but they, they won me over. It's actually a, a pretty damn uh, good product. No crash from it or anything? No. Oh. And it's not stimulant. So if you take it by itself, you're not going to feel mm-hmm. like you had- uh, Just more focused in your workouts? You, you just Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great combination uh, with caffeine so far. So right. I, and I, I did it again this morning, and it's, it's legit. They did a good job. All right. Our first caller is Spencer from Oklahoma. Hey, what's up, Spencer? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? How are y'all doing? Good. Good, good man. Uh, so I guess I kind of have a, a three-stage question- regarding programming for workouts. So I'm currently running uh, anabolic performance and aesthetic, and I have about two weeks left of aesthetic. And when I finish aesthetic, I'm going to be about eight weeks away from our baby's due date. So we're having our first baby in eight weeks. Um, so my question, my three-stage question is, the first stage is, you know, how should I kind of maximize those eight weeks before the baby comes, you know, as far as strength gains? And then how can I transition from uh, post-baby and up to jumping into power lift? Because I really wanted to do power lift when I finished aesthetic, but I would hate to start it. And then you no know, eight weeks later, the baby comes and it all just kind of gets interrupted. This first baby? First baby. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so um, so a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, so you've already been working out for a little while, following the MAPS programs. By the way, how, how have you? what's your experience been? How have your results been? Oh, it's been fantastic. My weight itself has not changed a whole lot, but I can definitely tell that it's kind of moving into more. You know, my muscles have definitely gotten bigger and stronger. Awesome. Good body composition change. That's, that's uh, the, one of the best things to accomplish uh, with a good workout program. Okay, so... Here's the deal. So your first kid, you have no idea what to expect. So we're all dads, so we can kind of clue you in a little bit. Uh, I think it's a good idea to start power lift uh, when you're done with aesthetic and go ahead and follow that program till your baby's born. After that, it's all up in the air, right? So uh, it's very unpredictable. Um, You're probably going to lose a lot of sleep. Depending on the baby, it can be challenging or whatever. At that point, really the best advice I can give you is to treat exercise as a way to improve your health and quality of life. Now, what does that mean? Well, it could mean that you only work out a couple days a week, or if things are easy, it could mean that you're not really skipping a beat. But really, there is no set in stone strategy because it can be quite unpredictable uh, with a newborn. Um, So uh, really, it's going to be about your attitude going into it. Don't worry about losing your gains and all that stuff because if stuff gets crazy, you're losing sleep, of course, you're going to take a few steps back with your fitness. But when things normalize, you'll get back very, very quickly. But really, the best thing to do, Mm. use your workouts as a way to improve your health during that period of time, which, again, may mean that you're not working out that much. Yeah, get all your heavy lifting in now, man. That's my my suggestion. (laughs) I like that. Honestly, I think that uh, I think you could stay the course as far as like what your plan was, which is, you know, moving on to power lift after this i personally the first few weeks for me uh, it got harder later on i don't know if you remember sal for you because you just went through it the most recent but i was actually still pretty consistent the first couple weeks it was more like around weeks four or five because all they do is sleep yeah at the beginning they're just they're attached to mom so much and and sleeping constantly there's not much dad gets to do uh to really help and support that much it really started to kick in about a month later. So actually, even the good first three, four weeks, I, I felt like I had kept my rhythm that I had going into it. Uh, it was after that where it got a little crazy. 
And my recommendation would be to, again, follow power lift as it just right afterwards as planned. Maybe you get a little bit further than you expect on it. And even if you don't, then the transition for me would be down to a program more like anabolic, where anabolic is programmed to where, you know, you only need to lift two to three times a week to kind of maintain the programming in there and be fine. It's full body. So if you miss one day of the week, it's not a big deal. You're still touching all the body parts. Um, if you have a really bad night's sleep and the next day you're lifting, you can just scale back on the intensity and don't go really heavy. So I find anabolic is one of the best programs to run when your, your schedule is kind of up in the air like that because I think you'll suffer the least by missing a day or two running that type of a program. So that would be my suggestion. Although... There's, you know, we have no idea what it's going to look like for you because everybody, it's a different experience. Yeah, you're in for the most amazing and challenging ride of your life. So, and it's hard to explain. Once you go through it, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. One more thing I'd like to add is you may want to, and this isn't going to be a huge game changer, but if your diet's good and you're doing a good job by modifying your workouts uh, based on maybe lack of sleep or whatever, you can also look into adaptogenic supplements that can help your body deal with uh, increases in stress. Uh, a good one is ashwagandha. It's a great supplement to take when maybe sleep isn't great, when you're a little stressed out because there's a bunch of new stuff happening. So that might be another thing that you can add to your strategy. Again, it's not going to fix everything by itself. It's not as if impactful as diet, sleep, and proper, uh, you know, properly applied exercises. But if those things are good... Throwing some ashwagandha into the mix uh, might help your body deal with the, you know, the lack of sleep and the increased stress. Okay. All right. There you go, man. Cool. Hey, congratulations, brother. Yeah. 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 Enjoy. Thank you, guys. Awesome. You can hear the, <laughs> the, the like, you know, in his voice. The, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, what's well, going to happen, guys? And it's so hard to to give someone that advice right now. We have eight weeks till it happens and every household's different. Yeah, like yeah. I have no idea what, how much of the responsibility will fall on him. Mm -hmm. um, I know all of our experiences have been different. So, you know, I know people that have maintained their work. That's their way they keep their sanity is being able to check out for an hour and go work out and they don't miss anything workout wise. And then I know other people that are trashed from no sleep and mm -hmm. they're lucky to train one day a week. So, you know, you, you have no idea what it's going to be like. And then also what kind of baby you have. Some people are just are blessed to get a baby who sleeps really early on and, mm -hmm. and they don't get crushed like some other people. And then you have the opposite. You got a colicky baby that's constantly screaming and crying. And, you know, you never know what this person's going to get. So it's really tough to try and predict that and then coach you yeah. now eight weeks early. Yeah, my kid's a party animal. The kid won't, doesn't want to sleep. He just wants to be, be awake all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that, but the majority uh, speaking, they're not going to get as much sleep as they did before. That's no. just not going to happen. They're going to be stressed out because of, like, you know, putting fires out of, you know, whatever they have to do to try and help out. It's just going to come to the forefront, so your priorities are going to shift. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, like, it's, it's also very difficult to predict uh, how it changes his view of things. I've known people who were their workouts were everything. And then they had a baby. And now you have this human that you need to take care of. Yeah. And you just it's just not important anymore to, to be so uh, fanatical about your workouts when you've got this, right. this, this thing that you love more than anything in the world. So it does change a lot. And again, it's his first kid when it's your first kid. And I remember this with my first kid. And I also, you know, I saw this with Jessica with her first kid, which is my third, is it's just it's so new that the unexpected plays a huge role you know it's like it's like i remember with my first you're in the hospital baby's born you know that first couple days the nurse helps you does the thing whatever and then they're like you know you leave all right see you later oh mm. i'm on my own now with the human you know yeah, yeah. and it's that that is a a big shock to the system when it's your first time our next caller is jacqueline from washington hey jacqueline how can we help you Hi. Uh, well, real quick, I just want to say thank you so much um, to all of you just for providing so such incredible content. You all have just deeply impacted my health and wellness more than you can imagine. So thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Awesome. My question is, so I've been training consistently for about four or five years, um, except for some part of COVID. Um, but when I say consistently, I mean that I've been training my legs consistently because that's where I have a harder time, um, just gaining muscle mass on my lower body. And so I definitely prioritize my leg days. Uh, I train my upper body maybe once or twice a month and actually feel really happy. That's the weird part. Like I feel really happy with the amount of muscle mass that I have on my upper body, but less happy with my strength 
Um, so I know I need to be more consistent with my upper body training, but because I know how easily I gain mass on my upper body, I feel, uh, for lack of a better word, intimidated because I don't want to get too bulky and I, I, I hate the word bulky, but, um, so have you ever helped anybody kind of get past that mental hurdle? And if you have, what helped? Yeah, this no, it's actually super common. It is. That's a great mm-hmm. question. Yeah. So, typically, with women, you'll see, you know, I don't want to work out my shoulders. I don't want to work out my back or my chest. Mm-hmm. With guys, you'll see, I don't want to work out my legs because I don't care. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask you a question, Jacqueline. Uh, so, mm-hmm. I'd like you to be totally honest. What yeah. is the number one motivation for you working out? Is it uh, just the way you look? Because I, I hear you talking about bulk and the way you look and the muscle. Is that the primary motivation for you? I think my overall uh, motivation is that I just want to be confident. I want to be confident overall. Um, yes, with how I look, but overall the strength, I I think that a lot of confidence does come with how much I can lift um, okay. or when when I was at my peak before COVID. Okay, okay Jacqueline. So, okay. So again, I'm going to ask you again, because yeah. if if strength and confidence were the your number one uh, motivators, I don't think we'd be having this conversation because uh, obviously- Working out provides a lot of different things, and most people, okay, I don't want you to feel bad, most people work out because they want to change how they look, and that kind of dictates what they do uh, in the gym. Um, yeah. Strength, if your goal was just strength, uh, then you know the comments wouldn't be, I'm afraid of getting bulky, or I don't work out my upper body. Um, is this resonating with you? Yeah, somewhat. Okay. So, so a couple of things that can help you. All right. Um, mm-hmm. it, number one, it, the road of focusing on how you look, there's nothing necessarily wrong with starting that way, but if you stay on that road, it will lead you in directions that, uh, eventually will start to take away how you look. And what I mean by that is the decisions that we make that tend to be driven by appearance oftentimes, and right now you're, you're, you're pretty young. I think, um, uh, you, you, I think you, did you, I think you told us, uh, you've been working out for a little while. You, you look like you're in your, in your twenties, 26, 26. If you continue down that path, uh, eventually you'll, you'll start to hit some roadblocks and uh, you'll start to actually lose, uh, the way you look. You see this in both men and women. So that's number one, focusing on your whole body will actually contribute to your appearance, especially in the long term in a good way, but you can't go at it by just appearance. You have to focus on the mobility, the strength, the performance, and the health. And then the second part is that the body really has these interesting mechanisms, these safety mechanisms, where it will only allow parts of your body to get so strong and developed in relationship to other parts of your body. It actually tries to maintain at least some semblance of balance. So like for guys who never work out their legs and they just want to get bigger arms, Sometimes what they need to do to get bigger arms is to work out their legs and vice versa. If you're having issues developing muscles in your legs, but your upper body strength is very low, believe it or not, your body may actually prevent you from reaching your full potential because it senses this big imbalance between your upper and lower body. Well, you'll lean out more for sure. A hundred percent, you'll lean out more by starting to build muscle in your upper body because you never do that. You train your legs so frequently that they're probably adapted to a lot of the training that you do. So when you actually switch over to doing more upper body, you're going to see the benefits of getting leaner in addition to building some muscle. Now, there's also there's also this part too. I mean, I've trained clients that uh, very similar. Uh, our legs is the area that we needed the most to work on, and uh, her upper body looked pretty phenomenal already. Great shoulders, great arms. And so the frequency of upper body training was a lot less. I'm just training her legs, you know, two, three times a week. Upper body, we just did one time per week just to kind of maintain because she was very happy with where her physique is. So, you know, this is a a back and forth between you and I. I have to, you know, hopefully I'm able to convince you that, okay, doing it one time a week, we're going to see some great benefits from it. We're not going to overtrain it to where you're going to see this crazy development. It's hard to build tons of muscle as it is. One time a week is not going to do that to your upper body. Uh, a lot of times you, you you see yourself different than other people. So that's the other thing I would challenge too is, you know, 
are you the one who thinks that you are looking bulky when you lift your body or are other people saying that to you? And have you ever asked somebody else who you trust their opinion and they go, hey, actually, you look really good. Um, that would be the other thing that I would challenge. But there's nothing wrong with having a body part that you feel is dominant already on your body, in your case, upper body, and doing less frequency than the rest. I mean, there's you if it's it's your body, if you like the way you look and feel, but then if you say to Sal that, okay, I want to be stronger and it's confidence, uh, and it's not really so much about my aesthetics and how I look. Well, then I would challenge you back again and say, then okay, then why aren't we training this once a week? Yeah, and, and uh, you know uh, that's a great point, Adam. I mean, you, you don't need to train it as much as your lower body, but you should do something for mm -hmm. it just to maintain strength, mobility, yeah. and, and function. And you don't need to attack it hard in the gym like you might do your lower body, but at the very least, train it so that it's stable and strong. Otherwise, um, you, you know, like I said, that imbalance will get worse and worse. Even if you don't look imbalanced, a huge strength imbalance can cause some serious problems. But part also, if like, so the client that I'm, I'm thinking about, a very specific client who I trained for a long time, and she didn't like the way that her legs looked. Like they, uh, you know, she wanted to change the way the legs looked so much, and we, she wasn't doing much upper body. And what I explained to her too is that, listen, you got to understand that if your body is so adapted to all this lower, lower body training and you haven't done any upper body training, as soon as we start putting some focus there, you're going to build a little bit of muscle. That's going to speed your metabolism up. That'll help you lean out the legs and the legs will look even better. Than and I bet want. it did. Yeah, absolutely. So there's that to consider too. Okay. All right. Does that, it, it, do you, does that help you a little bit? It does. It does. I... It does because I, I guess it kind of gives me that motivation with all of your guys' background and experience with working with different kinds of people and just like, I know I need to do it right, but it's just that mental like hurdle of like getting past it. Well, are you, are you driven more towards, you know, working your lower body because you don't like the way your lower body looks so much or are you avoiding the, the upper body because you feel like you're, I mean, what is it that's really keeping you in that direction? Mm. I feel like we're kind of going back and forth on what is it that's driving you? I don't feel like the truth has fully came out yet. And, and maybe it's a, it's something that I'm also kind of thinking about too. Uh, I think that with my legs, like it just makes me feel confident that I can be strong, but of course there's that part of me that absolutely wants to develop them even more. Uh, right now I train them maybe three, three and a half times a week, just depending when I can get into the gym. Mm. Um, but with my upper body, I just, I, I see like just how much, like, I, I just already feel like I don't want to add more mass on my upper body with the couple of upper body training days that I do already do. So that's where I'm a little confused well, myself. Well, keep in mind what I'm telling you is that because you don't train it that often, the minute you start training it, you will build muscle, which will then hopefully speed your metabolism up, help you lean out. Which which body fat takes up a lot more space than muscle does. So, right. you know, if you gained... A pound, of, even a, even a, I mean, two pounds of muscle in your upper body would be a lot uh, for a female, and it just, you can't even tell. But if you if you lost two pounds of body fat from your upper body, gained two pounds of muscle, you'd be smaller on your upper body because fat takes up uh, so much more space. And then back to your strength comment. Yeah. Uh, look, if somebody is strong in their upper body but weak in their lower body, or the reverse, somebody's strong in their lower body and weak in their upper body, guess what they are? They're weak. They don't have good strength. Your strength doesn't translate into the real world. So it doesn't matter you know, if you're a man and you don't work out your legs and you got a big back and chest and shoulders and you can you can bench press and, and row a lot. In the real world, when you go move a couch or go do something, yeah. you're weak. And the same is true for you. You may have strong legs, but if your upper body's not strong, then you're not really strong. Well, I wanted to ask you, have you done any kind of functional strength training? No, I don't think I have. Yeah, I just I feel like there's just way too much uh, in terms of like being fixated on your body parts and you know what's going up, what's going down. Like, have you ever just like thrown all of that out and just tried to master movements and you know work on skills and you know go in that direction? I think that'd be a healthy practice for you. Yeah, I I definitely have tried or wanted to um, just because I know that I've noticed a lot of tightness in certain areas of my body too. Mm -hmm. So if we, I, if we were to give you maps performance, would you follow it for us? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You guys are like my bigger brothers. Okay. Well, <laughs> then this is what we're going to do. And we're going to ask you to check back in with us. So we're going to set you up with maps performance. Doug will hook you up for free. 
and then I want you to follow that program, follow it to a T, mm -hmm. and then follow back up with us afterwards with your experience. Yeah, let us know how it all went. Okay, I will. All awesome. right, perfect. Great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough conversation when um, you're talking. And, and this is again super common. I don't want to. Yeah, put, it's very I, common. I don't want to put her on the spot, make her feel bad. This is most people I would work with in the first six months I train them. They don't. They, they were. They're, it's all about appearance, and it's very hard to transition their 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 state of mind or their motivation or what's driving them. But it is important to do that. You get stuck on that, and you can hear when she's talking. She wants to believe that strength and confidence are drivers, the driver, but yeah. the truth is it's not. The truth right. is it's about how she looks. Well, yeah, because there's this fear that you start touching weights in the upper body and it's going to bulk her up, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And I challenge that all day long. I, I, I know. I don't see it. You never, and, almost never see that. And sometimes it's the it's, sometimes it's just part of the process, right? I mean, you you if you go and you... You know, you you get a bunch of blood and fluid rushed into those muscles. It's gonna you know fill out, fill up, and it's gonna tighten your shirts up. And so, it's that initial feeling and illusion that's created when you mm -hmm. first do it, and that's enough. I mean, it's the same. It's the same issue that you know we've talked about and shared with our own issues of, you know, I I used to freak out if I didn't eat and a pound went down on the scale totally. as a skinny kid. It's like, totally. yeah. but it, really, I was not getting skinny. I wasn't losing muscle, but in my head, I was because I got on the scale and the next day I was down two or three pounds. And that was the driver on it, what made the decisions both nutritionally and how I exercise. It took me a long time to break through that. This is the same thing. It's just a different. It's just the opposite. It's her yeah. upper body, and she doesn't want to get big from lifting her upper body. She just may need like this psychological shift, you know, something to kind of release her of. That well, mentality. I I loved your suggestion. Yeah. Of, of I mean, that would be perfect. Yep. And performance is great because performance has got a lot of great lower body stuff that's going to challenge yeah, it's her. Totally different. Right. Yeah. But I, at the same time, too, it'll also challenge her upper body she touched on mobility so i thought that was a great recommendation right and i'll say this for the vast majority of people i mean 90 something percent of people if you trained in a way that was good for your body you trained the whole body you were relatively lean and healthy you would look in proportion it's very rare for somebody to do that for a while and to still look out of proportion it's not common a healthy body to somebody else when you look at them you'd say wow that person looks very balanced. Sometimes to ourselves, though, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm happy you said that, Adam, uh, to her when you said, you know, do you really think you see yourself objectively? To ourselves, we may these glaring, you know, uh, problems in our body, but the reality is, you look pretty damn good. Right. I mean, yeah. that's what I would challenge too. I bet you she starts lifting up her body and she gets compliments. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Our next caller is Emma Louise from the UK. Hey, Emma, how can we help you? Hey, so I'm from the UK, like I'm from Belgium, but I'm living now in the UK. And so all the gym are closed right now. And so I'm into powerlifting. And my question is, how can I still put strength and gain muscle mass without like no gym and only with a few dumbbells? How heavy a dumbbells do we have? Uh, only uh, 25 pounds. Mm. Okay, so great question. All right, there's a couple things here. Number one, especially when you're talking about powerlifting, um, because strength is also so much of a skill, you're not able to practice your barbell squat, your bench press, your deadlift. No matter what, mm -hmm. you're going to lose some strength in those lifts, but that's okay because it does come back very quickly. Now, the, I have spoken to a few powerlifters who are in a similar situation here in the States when their gym shut down, and I was able to convince them to focus entirely on mobility while they were unable to uh, go to a gym. And here's what mm -hmm. happened. Well, here's what happened to them. Okay. When they got back to the gym and it was about a, it was about eight weeks or so, six to eight weeks that they focused primarily on mobility. They, and they did some body weight exercises as well. When they went back to the gym as expected, they did lose some strength. However, the strength came back very quickly and because they were more stable and had better mobility, they surpassed their previous uh, personal best lifts in a relatively short period of time. So it actually was a blessing in disguise. In fact, one of them actually said that to me. He said this was a blessing in disguise, and he compared it to pulling an arrow back and then launching it. He's like, I had to take a few steps back, but now I'm further than I would have been had I not focused on mobility during this time when I had no access to, to a gym. Not only that, you have the opportunity to do uh, a lot of single-leg, unilateral work right here. I mean, this 25-pound dumbbells – 
do some, you know, single leg squats or deadlifts with that. And th those will be really, really challenging. So there's some uh, Bulgarian split stance. There's a lot of things that you can still do to build strength, even with a pair of 25 pound dumbbells. That's 50 pounds plus your body weight doing one leg, one legged exercises, I think would do, do you really well. Adding that with what Sal is saying with mobility, um, I think you could actually come back to the gym, not losing much strength at all. Okay, so like using those 25 pound dumbbells to like still try to in, like gain uh, other like mobility and stuff like that. Yeah, so you, yeah. you, you could yeah. do you could do single leg deadlifts. You can do a lot of stuff like Adam was mentioning, unilateral work. So, uh, you know, you're going to find discrepancies between one side versus the other. And usually that's just a lack of stability. And this is something that a lot of power lifters don't address uh, because you, you get into the, I'm trying to gain strength and trying to add load consistently and, and progressively get stronger and stronger. Uh, meanwhile, like that puts a lot more stress on the joints and the joints, uh, you know, are... It, the body recognizes whether or not you have any kind of weakness or instability. And so you have a threshold. So you're only going to get so far. Uh, and so this is an opportunity, like they mentioned, to really, you know, hone in, laser in and address these things yeah. uh, by by just purely focusing on that for a bit. And you can, you can slow down your reps. So um, go very, very slow to increase the intensity of the exercise, make it feel more difficult. You can do one arm, one leg exercises. Um, and then mobility, I'm going to stress that. Really do, you know, two, three times a day, 15, 10 to 15 minutes, work on mobility exercises. Emma, do you have access to uh, MAPS Prime Pro? Because I feel like that would help you the most. Uh, no, because like now, I don't really have like enough money to to buy it now because my job closed because of the COVID. Okay. So, but yeah. Mm. Okay, we're going to give you Maps Prime Pro uh, for free. So you're going to have access to it uh, as soon as we get off the phone here. Um, Doug will send that over to you uh, shortly afterwards. Go in Maps Prime Pro and do about 10 to 15 minutes of mobility exercises for your for different parts of your body, maybe a couple times a day, and focus on that for now. When you go back to the gym, in a short period of time, you'll gain your strength back, but then you'll notice that you'll probably surpass where you were before. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem, Emma. You know, I, you would be surprised how strong you could get with a pair of 25 pounds. That's 50 pounds. Yeah. Okay, 50 pounds. 50 pounds, even for a, a dude, is is a good amount of weight to build some strength with if you're doing everything one-legged. Yeah. One-legged deadlifts, one pistol squats, uh, Bulgarian split yeah. stance squats. There's a lot of movements that you can do to still get you, strong. You'll, it just it depends on how far along somebody is in powerlifting. If they're pretty competitive, just not practicing the specific exercise, you'll notice a decrease in strength. But that doesn't mean you're you're not strong. It right. just means you lost some of the skill because you have to practice the skill of a lift over and over again to to get really good at it. But what you're saying is is very true. You get strong at these single leg exercises. She'll go back to her squat, and she may notice that it's yeah. not where it was because she hasn't squatted in a while with a barbell, but then she'll find that she'll surpass it. Well, even, and I didn't bring this up, but like moving in different planes. So a lot of times you get very fixated on the sagittal plane in front and behind without any rotation, any side to side movement. Yep. You know, that's something that too, you could fill a lot of gaps uh, by really focusing in on that while you have the time. Our next caller is Mike from the UK. Hey, Mike, how can we help you? Hi there, guys. Um, first of all, thanks for the show. Real uh, real font of information and, and challenging as well. Don't agree with everything you say, but it's, it's a fantastic show to listen to. <laughs> um, uh, so distance runner. I'm a distance runner. I've been running distance for 10, 15 years. Um, and I'm not getting any, any younger. want to get a bit stronger. Frankly, want to look a little bit better. Nobody's ever looked at a long distance runner and gone, God, they look good. Um, so, um, I've, I've, at least I've you're self aware. <laughs> <laughs> Your good. I've purchased, I've purchased performance and anabolic, um, but I'm almost a little bit nervous to start. You know, I, I still enjoy running. I don't want to stop it completely, hmm. but just want to structure it right when I get into it. Now everything's shut over here. Gyms are completely locked down. So just kind of beginning to kind of plan for when they reopen, just kind of a bit of advice on how, how to mix a bit of running with, 
you know, performance and anabolic. Mike, how much how much are you currently running right now per week? Um, probably doing about you know, it's, it's 20, 25 miles, uh, f- five, five, six runs a week. Mm. Um, are you, you tr- know, with, with a few? Are gone. you are you trying to are you trying to keep that high of a frequency up while also programming? Or are you asking what we think is a good suggestion if you want to still run a little bit, but also run one of the programs? Yeah, yeah, a, a, a good suggestion actually. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to pair it back because you know I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the program justice. So personally, I would love to see you run Maps Performance and then run on your mobility day. So you would do mobility work and then go take off for your run on the mobility days, and you could do that three days a week. So you could lift three days a week on the foundational workouts, and then three days of mobility work before you go off on a run. To if you were my client and you, I was trying to compromise how much you like to run, but then also try and program well for you, that's what it lo- would look like for yeah. me. I'll, I'll get a little bit more specific, even Mike. Uh, I, I would go uh, it, if you're going to run ten miles a week, then I could I would do two days of uh, of resistance training, the the foundational workouts and performance. If you're going to go fifteen miles or more a week, then I would break it down to one. Um, when you throw in a lot of resistance training, two, three days a week, plus 15 plus miles of running, for most people, it just becomes way too much and you end up getting negative uh, returns. But if you're doing about 10 miles a week, uh, which is less than half of what you're doing, and you include two days a week of resistance training, you may actually find that you get a little faster. Um, and mm-hmm. I've actually experienced this with some of the distance runners that I've trained. Again, if you go up to 15 miles or more, then one day a week of resistance training will be plenty, and you'll still get some benefit from the resistance training. Oh no, that's fantastic! Um, and kind of getting back into it, I, I bought Starter as well. Would that be a good one to just get back into it? As the gyms have been shut for bloody months now, um, would it be worth kind of launch straight into performance, or you know, just kind of get into it with with Map Starter? No, great. I'm glad you you did that um, because you you haven't done any resistance training. Start with uh, start with Map Starter. That's fantastic. Brilliant. No, really appreciate that, guys. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, great question. And it's Sal who you mostly disagree with, right? <laughs> I, I, I've got to say, we, we, we've had a few spiky conversations on Instagram, but, you know, it, if, if I agreed with everything, it'd be a boring show to listen to. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with half his shit he says, so don't yeah. worry. It's and, totally it, normal. Oh, <laughs> and, and the best bit, it, it's whoosh this year sauce. Oh, that, that, that oh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, that's been corrected. Thank you. Hey, 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 at least you got that amazing accent. Don't worry about looking like a long distance runner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you got you guys. You guys look good. I sound good, but yeah. we'll keep it at that. So, uh, <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank yeah, you very cheers. much. Cheers. I fucking love everybody in the UK. I swear to God, yeah, they they're some of our of favorite humor. listeners. I, yeah, they do have a good sense of humor. Yeah, man. They, yeah, I feel like the people people in the US. I think we're so goddamn sensitive. Yeah, you're dude. right, Way too sensitive. Right, yeah, 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 you're right. totally right. Right, we were like overly sensitive over there. Them, you could talk shit to them and they give it right back. Dude, one of my best yeah. friends was from the UK, Bav, and he would just we would rip each other, and it was just a good time. I love that. It was dude. a good time. You know, I I, lo- I love his question because uh, you know if you do run a lot. First off, resistance training has tremendous benefit for any athletic endeavor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to provide more stability. Of course, strength is the foundational physical pursuit, meaning if you increase your strength, you're going to get better at pretty much everything else, right? So if I impre- if you improve your strength, your endurance is going to go up, your stamina is going to go up, your stability is going to go up, your balance is going to go up. But there's always the problem of how much can I include along with my training because yeah. at some point you overdo it. When you're running a lot, you know, I've trained quite a few marathon runners and triathletes. I have them resistance train usually once a week. That's mm-hmm. it. And we're doing very basic stuff and we're not overdoing it. It's to support you, you yes. know their priorities. And that's really what you have to identify from the beginning is like, what is the real goal? Like if you want to use resistance training to, uh, you know, beef up and support the strength that goes into the running, because uh, uh, that's where you want to be the most. That's what we have to structure. You have to be very realistic with your goals too. I mean, you you have to understand that if you want to start to build muscle and change the way your body looks you are going to get worse at running. Mm-hmm. That's just coming. Yeah. That's just, you have to accept that. And it's just how how much are you willing to give up of that for the, the look that you're trying to obtain? Or I really don't care that much about the look. I just want to get stronger to complement my running. Totally different. Totally. If you're telling me that, oh, and that's where I think what you suggested was great, Sal, one day a week because you're still, your main focus is running. I want to be a good runner, but I also see the benefits of strength training. But you're not going to change your, if you're running 
20 plus miles a week and you're only strength training, you're not going to change your body radically. You're not going to be all of a sudden this buff runner. Mm. You're going to be mobile, more mobile. You're going to be stronger, but your running is still going to be great. So you have to understand what your actual goal is and what you really want to accomplish from it and then be okay yeah. with it. There's a give and take. It's funny too. I had one client who was a marathon runner and her, her goal was to qualify for the New York uh, marathon, you know, one of the bigger ones. And I, I forgot what time she had to get in another marathon in order to qualify. So, and she was running a lot every single week. We actually reduced her running down. I think she was running even leading up to the marathon, 15 miles, I believe was the max, so that we could make uh, time for strength training. And mm -hmm. she got faster. Mm -hmm. And a lot of marathon runners make the mistake of just running more and more and more and more to get better at a marathon when oftentimes it's too much. They bring it down just a little bit, yeah. strengthen their body, and they actually see an improvement in performance. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Now, is that you know a valid question for a potential client to ask you know the trainer? Like, how many 100%. people are you servicing? 100%. I think it should be how many clients do you work with? How closely do you work with your clients? Like, right. If you're a client and you're asking a potential trainer, like think of all the scenarios where you've been disappointed before. By the way, if you're a coach, think about on your come up, 